Save money here. Hi, I'm Anita Joyce here with Kelly Wilkness, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks. Today's episode, What to Save On. So previously we covered what to splurge on. And today we're talking about what to save on. And it is such a difficult decision when you go into a room and you have a certain budget, where should you be splurging and where should you be saving your pennies? This is such a tough decision, even for a seasoned professional. And so that's why we're going to go room by room today and talk about where to save money. I agree with you. It is a hard decision and knowledge is key. You know, sometimes you just feel like you need to spend a lot of money on something, and in reality, you don't. And that's why we have all these great tips and advice for you with respect to each room. And if you absolutely fall in love with something and it's on our you can save list, and it's but it's going to cost you a lot of money, well, you know, that's a personal decision. But I always think that knowledge is power, and this information will help you making those possibly tough decisions when you're really getting down to crunching the numbers for your budget. Or And also, you just don't want to feel kind of like dumb because you spent a lot of money on something that you didn't have to spend a lot of money on, and then you don't have money for that special thing that you really want. So I think this episode, of course, coupled with the other one, would really put you on the right track uh, with regard to these crucial rooms. So we've covered living room, kitchen, bedroom, and bathroom in the Where to Splurge, and we're going to cover those same rooms today. Let's go into the living room. You can save on lamps. I think there are a lot of great choices on Amazon, and that is probably one of the places where you're going to find really the best prices. But you certainly do not need to spend $400 on a lamp. And yes, there are lamps that price, $300, $400. And I've noticed I was in TJ Maxx recently, and... Their lamps even were a hundred to two hundred dollars, so it's very interesting. The prices have gone up a lot, but I think you don't need to spend a crazy amount of money to get something good looking. I totally agree. I've talked about that Walmart knockoff of a circle lighting lamp that I purchased for my bedroom a few times. It's gorgeous, it's ceramic and metal. How is it going to be better ceramic and better metal? I mean, it's just, it's got a lovely shape. It has the same shape, basically, as the one that was over $600. Could I change the shade? Sure. But the other one, the expensive one, came with a white shade, too. This is a white shade. It's perfectly fine. You know, I used to work in a furniture store years ago. And when we had lamps that had white lampshades, they did not sell. Isn't that interesting? Huh. But now I would say white lampshades are very popular. Most lamps that are in the lower price point are actually going to also come with a shade. It's the ones that are higher price point. You'd often see where the shade is sold separately. So that's something to look for too. Lamps Plus has really nice choices in a pretty moderate price range. You can definitely score some on Amazon. Sometimes they even come in sets. Uh, I would just go with simpler lines. If you can find something that's ceramic or like a gourd shape that we really like, that, those are classic. So you can't really go wrong. And as I mentioned with my Walmart knockoff, you can't really mess up those materials too much. If it's just simple porcelain, ceramic with a little metal detailing, You can't make that look cheesy, really. It would be hard. But if you go in a little (laughs) over the top, there's a little too splashy, there's a little too much going on, or the metal's a little too shiny, then it might look like it's, you know, kind of a cheapo lamp. So just be careful when you're shopping a lot in particular. My first one in the living room, it's top of mind because I recently did this with a client. Uh, We were looking for a more mid-century modern bookcase or etagere to fill a rather large wall that was kind of boring, but we needed a little something there and we needed some height. She was doing her own searching uh, along with me and she found some beautiful choices, but they were all upwards of $2,000. And simple, simple lines made of metal, like I'm saying with the components of the lamp, it's metal. How much stronger is somebody's metal going to be from our house or West Elm for over $2,000 as compared to, wait for it, Home Depot at 
less than 200. Whoa. We were going to even get two of them, but we said, let's just order one at 36 wide and see how it looks on the wall. And it, it looks great. And we put a big basket with a nice size plant next to it. And so it really fills the space beautifully. And I came over and styled it for her. It's gorgeous. And you would never really know how much you spent on it. You could look like you spent two grand on it, but we didn't. So I think you can definitely save on bookcases and etagères in a living room. We have talked, oh, so many times about the Ikea billies and Anita has the... It's the Havsta. And the reason I like the Havsta is because the shelves are solid wood. So if you're putting heavy books on it, you're going to need probably a Havsta. The billy mm -hmm. is not for books uh, mm -hmm. because it's, it's particle board. It's going to sag. So the billy is really more for lighter weight things. And if you have time and you want to fall down the billy or any Ikea bookcase DIY hole tunnel, it goes very, very deep. And you could be doing this for a long time. But I just saw another one on Instagram, a reel. And I was like, whoa, they went wall to wall in this living room and they mm -hmm, painted mm -hmm. it a beautiful color and they did, and they were using the Habstas. And I think the bottoms even had cabinetry. Absolutely gorgeous. I would just say for safety, any bookcase, but particularly something like that, where you're going to line a bunch of them up, attach them to the walls, especially if you're putting heavy stuff and you have kids and dogs and things like that. But those are two places in my mind, the bookcase or the etagere or shelving unit, if you want to call it that, I think you can certainly save on those. And so I think that is a nice place to save. And you're right. It is amazing how well some of these Ikea pieces work there. And I, too, have seen many cases where people have used Billy's or the Havstas and just put a little trim on the front and stack them side by side. And they've been stunningly gorgeous. And you're right. The Billy's and the Havstas do come in shelving, open shelving and closed cabinetry. So I think that would work very nicely. Another place to save is on end tables. I've been looking for some online and I've really found quite a few pretty inexpensive, but quite charming end tables. So it really is amazing what you can find. Uh, the other great thing about end tables or nightstands, really, you can use them for the same thing, but, but we're in the living room, so we're going to call them end tables. <laughs> Go to an antique store, a thrift store. There are so many little chests, little uh, pieces of furniture that you can use. Maybe it's a small table. Maybe it's just a little bachelor's chest. But these work so well for end tables, and you really do not need to spend a lot of money for that. 100% agree. That is on my list as well. Uh, my next one would be coffee tables, which I had coffee tables slash end tables. So coffee tables. I don't like to have a coffee table that is too clunky. And I really like to have a coffee table that is the piece that creates a little tension in the room. So if you're very traditional, I like to have a coffee table that just hints more to the modern. Streamline, maybe just metal, maybe glass, but something simple. I love the idea of being able to see your rug through it, particularly if you've gone to the effort of layering rugs. So maybe you have something with a pattern under the coffee table. So if that layered rug is a smaller size than, than the under rug, you're only going to see parts of it anyway. And if you put a clunky coffee table on top of it, you're really going to see very little of it. So I like to have an opened, airy, coffee table, even if it isn't glass on the top, if the legs you can see through, I think it really does a lot for a room. And as I said, creates that tension that you can get and what is really key to great decorating. The other thing about coffee tables is you can find them at thrift stores and consignment stores, as Anise mentioned with the end tables and side tables. It's a great opportunity to find something really inexpensive Maybe you change the color a little bit. And if it has really simple lines, then you're able to do that and maybe take something that's, say, a stain you wouldn't love or just a sad little brown piece and bring it back to life. You want to add a little modern touch to it. Maybe you do it in a flat black or something like that. But it's not a spot where I would want to spend a lot of money because I really want something simple. Amazon is a great spot to get a really simple, inexpensive coffee table. You can find them for around $150 and up. 
you could spend thousands of dollars on a coffee table, but you mm -hmm. definitely don't need to do that. That's interesting. I actually put the coffee table as my splurge in the last, one of my splurges in the last episode. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you really could go both ways on this. You don't need to spend a lot, but my caveat is... I think it really needs to be something unique and interesting. And I just don't want it to look like it's such a feature piece in your room. It, mm -hmm. Your eye is going to go straight to it. So I think it's really important that it be a unique piece of furniture and really uh, present the kind of the look that you're wanting in the room. So this is where the tension gets created at the podcast, which also, <laughs> not a, like a room, makes it really interesting because we usually agree, great minds can disagree, and in this case, we definitely do because I don't want my coffee table to, to be speaking loud in the room. I want it to sort of be very simple. It's not that it has to be loud, but I just don't want it to look like everyone else's. And a lot mm -hmm. of the cheap ones all look alike. So that's fine. I mean, you know what? That I love to agree and disagree with you. It's so fun. <laughs> Either way. Pillows and throws. This is such an easy, simple way to add something to your room. And they typically are quite inexpensive. And our caveat with pillows and throws, or at least my personal one, is to try to stay away from the synthetic fibers and try to stick with natural fibers. I think you're going to be happier with it in the long term. And I think it's going to look better. I just purchased some pillows on Amazon. It was a set of two. I think there were 20 by 20s for my mother-in-law's new condo. I don't think I mentioned on the podcast that I went and helped my mother-in-law move out of the home she's lived in, in 50, for 50 years. Wow. And so there was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of purging. And I really wanted to help her set up or kind of do it myself. I did do it myself. I made her stay at her daughter's house at my sister-in-law's house. Oh, and I set like up a her TV condo show. for her. Yes, it was so fun. She was so surprised that I found these gorgeous pillows to match and really kind of freshen up her sofa and the rugs and things like that. But just kind of the pillows pulled the room together. Well, both rooms, the den and the living room. I bought both sets on Amazon because I thought if she doesn't like them, I actually, crazy me, I was worried about because she was moving out and then she was moving in and what the mail was going to be. So I actually traveled there with my pair of Lululemons and my workout outfit that I was wearing because I knew I was going to work hard and like one other pair of jeans in my suitcase and <laughs> pillow inserts <laughs> and, <laughs> and four pillow covers. Oh, that's funny. A candle and something else. When I went through security, they're probably like, this is a very strange suitcase. So anyway, my point being, I was so surprised at the quality of these pillows mm -hmm. that I purchased on Amazon. I have purchased pillows on Amazon before and they're inexpensive, the pillow covers. And you think, okay, you know, for this amount of money, this is fine. These were over the top. They, wow. Yes, gorgeous. It, like almost like um, a brocade. The one set wow. was so lovely that the fabric had such great feel and heft. So I will link those in the show notes and they were so inexpensive. I'm going to be looking for this link. That sounds yes, great. Yes, and I, I'm sure they came in other color waves than the ones that I purchased, but they, I purchased the ones in kind of maroons and blues and creams that would go with her rug. But I will link those in the show notes. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. It's been spring break here, and wow, was it terrific to have Factor Meals in the fridge. Busy, fun days out with my girls, and we headed home to delicious, nutritious meals ready to go in two minutes. No stopping at the grocery store, no stress, and no waiting. Factor is your solution to quick, nutritious, delicious meals. Looking for gourmet meals? Try the meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, broccolini, and asparagus. You get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes with factors, so you can get back to doing what you love this spring. 
So head to factormeals.com slash DTT50 and use the code DTT50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code DTT50 at factormeals.com slash DTT50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Wrap yourself and your home in cashmere this spring with Quince. From their iconic $50 cashmere sweaters to pillow covers and throws, my latest cashmere from Quince is a navy cardigan. It's such a classic. And I'm going to pair it with white jeans, dresses, and skirts throughout the spring. All Quince's products are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. And by partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of that middleman and passes the savings on to us. And they only work with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics like the cashmere. So elevate your home and your wardrobe with Quince this spring. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. Okay, let's move into the kitchen. This was one that could have gone either way. I said lighting because I think you can get some really good deals and that tends not to be too expensive. But again, I do think it's important important to have something really nice looking uh, in your kitchen. Uh, just you want something that's going to really pick up the style of the room and why not have add beauty with your lighting so i think it's important but you can definitely get a great price on something really pretty uh, if you're shopping online for sure i think a lot of what we're putting out there today is also just sort of is really sort of just changing the mindset on certain item furnishings sometimes people just think you have to spend a lot on this So they're not surprised when they go look for something and it's expensive. So this is just sort of to open up your mind. Of course, if you fall in love with a lantern for your kitchen and that is just the one that's going to make the whole look and that's where you want to put your budget, sure. Would you go wrong buying something from a a high-end brand? No. But we're saying open your mind to the fact that there are a lot of things out there in the lighting department and these other areas that we're talking about for savings that so you don't have to and you can still get something great so we're certainly not saying don't spend the money and just get something sort of mid-range no you want to get something fabulous but in these various categories whether it's bookcases etagers coffee tables side tables and now we're into the kitchen you don't have to there are options that are very budget friendly so mine for the kitchen is the cabinetry I think mid-range cabinetry is really accessible and beautiful. Ikea even has great cabinetries. I've never had an Ikea kitchen, but I've seen them. And I think they've come a long way, like that whole store has. So I think if you are in the market to redo your kitchen and everybody's got a budget and you know you want to get a fabulous countertop, maybe you want to get some fabulous faucets, we talked about in the splurge episode the cabinets as long as they're hard wood they're boxes with doors on them or drawers so it's kind of like the lamp that's made of ceramic and metal or the etager that's made of all metal it's the material so if you're getting the same material without either the brand name or some fancy detailing or something like that you can really save. And certainly if you're going to do paint grade, it's less expensive than you're going to do a stain because you don't have to have a special type of wood. So most people are still going to be painting their cabinetry, although we've seen some more wooden kitchens coming back in, but that's kind of not where the design of the kitchens are going. I think, you know, some of them look great that way, but most people are going to paint their cabinetry these days. So paint grade is a great way to go. And simple boxes, you can do, you know, an interesting door if you want, but shaker is really the best choice. It's simple. It goes with almost every look 
and you're not going to regret it either five, 10 years down the line. And somebody's not going to be like, oh, uh, I don't really want to buy that house because I got to rip the whole kitchen out. True. And while we're talking about the cabinets, my next item is are the poles and knobs. And you might be saying, well, this isn't an expensive item anyway. Why are we even talking about this? But once you buy 30 of them, uh, something that's $15 or $20 can escalate very quickly. And so this is something that I found. I shop around a lot. And the last poles I bought for the last uh, kitchen job were really a very good price for what they were. They're really very good price. So I think there are really good deals on the cabinet poles and knobs as well as the cabinets like you're saying. So I think that's a great way uh, to go. Just look around and you're going to find some good deals. Oh yeah, that's a, that's my list. That's my next one. Cabinetry hardware. You absolutely do not have to spend a lot on that. And if you want a one or two real specialty ones, see if in your kitchen design you have either a cabinet or a, a space that's a little separated from the others, maybe sort of a coffee station, something like that, that's a little bit onto itself. So if you wanted a certain knob that really turned your head and it was pretty costly, you could just get two or four and the rest could really be simple and not cost you very much money. But there are so many different styles. D Lawless is a company we have worked with for years. Uh, that's a family owned hardware store. They're online. They also have brick and mortar and they're in Chicago. You can just find them, dlawless.com. But even the Island Home Depot has some good choices. They're not going to have every finish that you want, but they're going to have some really good options in the brushed uh, nickel or even a, a brass and definitely the oil rub bronze. They all still have that. Counter stools at your countertop on your island. This is something where, I mean, actually, I just picked out some for our consult this afternoon uh, for our client. Uh, that we're talking to. So this is a place that you can save money as well. You can spend a lot of money there, but you can also save money. So again, shop around. You can get really simple for counter stools, especially if you want something that's going to go under mm -hmm. a peninsula or under the island, you know, the counter overhang, and you don't want to see the tops of it, which I know people like to have the back when they're sitting there. So if you sit there for dinner and whatnot, consider getting something with a back or even tufted. So of course the price is going to go up a little bit for that. But if you're just having something where maybe someone's sliding in there to have a cup of coffee or a glass of wine or a quick lunch, I would suggest you could just go with wooden stools and then you could paint them some fun pop color. And that is so reasonable. But that being said, there are so many options, even with some detailing, even with some fabric, that are really reasonable. I 100% agree with you, Anita. I've been telling you how my dogs absolutely love whole life pet food and treats. But what about you cat lovers? Cats are also supported by whole life pet in very important ways. Apparently, cats don't often drink enough water and they really need to stay hydrated to ensure proper urinary tract and kidney function. Whole Life Pet Bistro Bowls freeze-dried hydrating snacks are a new innovation that solves this common problem with cat hydration while also supporting the whole body health of your pet. Just add water to create an instant, flavorful, nutritious broth in seconds. All the cat food made by Whole Life Pet is human grade with nothing artificial. It's rich in proteins like chicken, salmon, and tuna with five added superfood ingredients. So visit wholelifepet.com slash podcast and use the promotion code DTT to get 25% off your first order. Plus, you'll receive free shipping if you order over $50. That's wholelifepet.com slash podcast, promotion code DTT to get 25% off your first order order. Pretty is great, but comfort is king when it comes to shapewear, bras, leggings, and anything you're wearing as a foundation piece. And Honey Love makes it pretty and comfortable. I wear my Honey Love pieces from morning until night, and I can't tell you how comfortable they are. You've got to try it for yourself. Honey Love has revolutionized the compression technology so you no longer have to feel like you're suffocating while wearing effective shapewear. 
Plus, they have comfortable bras, tanks, and leggings for everyday support. With Honey Love, you can lift, flatten, support, and boost your confidence. So treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash DTT. And you can use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash DTT. After your purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. And please let them know it was from Decorating Tips and Tricks. Move with confidence. Thanks to Honey Love. Are you ready to move to the bedroom? Well, yes, I am. <laughs> okay. Well, I've kind of hinted at this. In the living room, because remember we said some of the same things you can use for nightstands that you can use mm-hmm. for end end tables. Uh, so nightstands, again, they're the same sort of things that you can buy for the living room. Uh, there are just some great deals out there. And, uh, I've you know, Amazon has them and even TJ Maxx online. I found some really cute ones. So if you want something just kind of small and... Um, kind of fun, I think you can get a great deal. If you want something really elegant looking, you may need to spend a little more money, but there's a lot of fun ones out there. Well, I think this is where the little sad brown little chests or dedicated nightstands that you see all over the place, they're kind of sitting next to the row of china cabinets (laughs) at your local (laughs) thrift store or consignment store can really come into play. Um, in In our bedroom, Peter's side has a, I would say, a bachelor's chest. It's a small three drawer. It's East Lake style. I think I got it for forty bucks, and I painted it flat black. On my side, I have a wicker table, so they don't have to match, but they really work. And I think for the two of them, I probably didn't spend more than eighty bucks, and I love them. I wouldn't change them. So you can definitely troll your local thrift stores, consignment stores, people do the Facebook marketplace, all that kind of thing, and find something. Or if you have uh, a limited space, you could even do a garden stool. You could do some littler piece of furniture, a cute little wooden stool, something like that, if you're short on space. So I think there are so many fun options, and you can really give your room a lot of interest by not spending a lot of money and not getting a matchy-matchy nightstand set. My thought for a place you can save in the bedroom is the headboard. Even nice tufted headboards are not expensive. And I don't think you have to get the full surround on the bed, particularly if you're going to go with a fabric or upholstery. I just think that's a spot where even if you're super careful, I just think accidents, feet, dogs trying to get up, things like that. I just, it's not a place you can really clean very easily. I've seen Serena Lily and other lovely catalogs or online or in shops where they have the, the tufted headboard and then the, the rails are all tufted and then there's the tufted uh, footboard and all of that. Gorgeous, but I don't think that's really practical. And I'm super neat, Nix, but I still think that I would really have a problem with that. We had a tufted headboard once, which was just a separate headboard, not attached to any of that. And my little Maltese likes to lean up against the headboard. Uh You know, Uh and he's really not supposed to be on the bed, but some people put him on there. And (laughs) even though he gets cleaned a lot, he's a dog. And his coat definitely changed <laughs> not for the better the little <laughs> spot that he liked and i was like what's going on in there so i had to get rid of that so i would oh, stay away no. from tufted headboards because i have dogs and people do put them on the beds so i think you can have a headboard without the rails without the footboard and just get one that can you can even attach it to the wall or you can attach it to a metal hollywood frame you can probably get one for less than 200 bucks. So that's a great place. You can also thrift and consign these. Now, when you go to a thrift store and a consignment store, you don't often see king size. You're often seeing twins and they're just darling, but most people aren't sleeping in twins. You might see a queen now and again. That's the thing where you can really bring it back to life as well. It could be painted if it's simple and it's got nice bones, nice lines. Maybe it's kind of curved. Maybe it's got some posts at the end. You could paint it. You could strip it. So I don't think you need to buy a bed 
with the whole shebang going on. And if you have a room that's on the smaller side, I would tend to say don't get a footboard. So it's going to save you money if you just get the headboard. And because I think the footboard kind of gives your eye a stop, particularly if it's a tall one. So I would stay away from that if you kind of your room is an average size room and you're walking in and like you're seeing the back of the bed right away. Well, that's a good point. And I love a headboard and a footboard. But in some situations, I agree with you, it can cut off the room. And if you're buying a newer headboard footboard, most of them are a lower profile these days. I mean, every one I've bought recently, I mean, in the last maybe even five years, mm-hmm. does not have a tall footboard. Uh, and I have to agree with you on the headboard there. If you get an upholstered headboard, they are super cheap and they're very comfortable. I went ahead and bought an upholstered headboard, kind of wondering, is this going to stay clean? Uh, it was a guest bed and I did not tell people, uh, put a pillow between your head and the headboard. And when we moved, I did notice a smudge <laughs> on it. However, however, a smudge, that's right. I went with flat, a flat upholstery fabric, not tufted. The reason I went with something flat, and it's flat across the top, although it has kind of got some French detail, the reason I did this was because, you know, I do make slip covers. And mm-hmm. so I thought, were there a problem, I can make something super simple to slide over this with some ties to cover up any problem. Who knew I was going to need to do this so soon? But as a stopgap... <laughs> No more guests, or at least not that one. Yeah. So as a stopgap, I I just kind of draped a a uh, matless a quilt over it, mm-hmm. so that you can lean up against that and to protect the as a headboard gap <laughs> from future damage. But yeah, I'll slip cover it. <laughs> so I am hundred percent know what you're talking about. Yeah. On that, so you have another one for the bedroom. I do. I do. Uh, Curtains. So, and again. Ah, Here we go. Tension, tension, tension. I feel it coming. Well, again, no, no, no. Not cheap curtains. Again, it's like, the. it depends on how you define splurge and spend. Because curtains, I think you need nice curtains. But the point is, you can get them so much cheaper now. You, years ago, had to buy custom-made curtains to get anything that looked halfway decent. But now... You have your source, your half price drapes, you've talked about it, and so many other places where you can get great curtains for a good price. So I have them on the save, but you can't go too cheap or it's not going to work. Yeah. And I think we went into depth on that episode 618. So it, definitely, if you haven't listened to that one, you're listening to this one, I would cue that one up next and enjoy that one. We do discuss the draperies and the curtains, and we have some good sources in that one as well. So uh, let's stroll into the bathroom. Tile. Don't have to spend a lot of money on tile. Of course you can. And of course it can be beautiful if you want to. But the point of this episode is to open your mind to places where you don't have to spend and make you realize that there are a lot of great options out there. Tile can be super simple, and your bathroom can be absolutely beautiful. Go to Home Depot, get the subway tile in white, and you're done for like 69 cents a tile. Or you can spend a whole lot of money on a subway tile that has a slight bevel. But you know what? The bevel's going to probably feel too trendy in a couple of years and maybe too busy. You've got bevel, you've got grout. So there could be issues with sort of tweaking that simple subway. There's a reason why subway tile in its purest form has lasted this long, it's because it is a classic and that's a great place to save. Because like the kitchen hardware, you have to buy multiples of it, it really adds up. So if you're spending less than a dollar for a tile as opposed to spending $8 per tile or up, it really makes a difference. I have tile on here as well. And I think go simple rather than something exotic, rather than something with a really strong pattern because it, it's just going to stand the test of time and you're going to be happy with it for the long haul. And it may not be sexy, but I think you're going to be happier with it that you don't have to replace it in a few years. 
uh, another thing to think about are your towel bars, rope hooks, and all those accoutrements that go on the walls. I think that's a place where you can get really great prices for those items and you do not need to spend a lot of money on those. And while we're talking about the accoutrement in the bathroom, as Anita mentioned, the towel hooks, bars, rings, things like that, toilet paper holder, I don't think you have to spend a lot of money on there. There are a lot of great options. You also don't have to have a set of that. It is nice when it all works together, but it doesn't have to all work together. If you've got something that's distinctly different, maybe you do the toilet paper and uh, maybe a towel ring, the same, but then maybe you have some super interesting hooks that you found that maybe are vintage or something like that. You could definitely do that. While we're discussing these items, I would rethink that towel bar. Because it's kind of an awkward thing to have on the wall if you're not going to have towels on it all the time that look good. You don't want somebody just stuffing a wet towel in there and that's what's on the wall, kind of like art in a sense because it's taking up wall space. (laughs) Your decor. (laughs) Yeah, and I don't want to live necessarily like I did growing up where there were show towels and you were like, "Ah," and your hands are dripping and you're like, I I know I'm not allowed to use those. Like, (laughs) Just wipe your hands on your pants kind of thing. I don't want that. So I've opted for just hooks. So even if it's kind of wet or casually tossed on the hook, it still looks pretty good. And you don't have then this empty bar or this bar with something stuffed on it or this bar of show towels that never get used. So just something that you probably don't even need to have in your bathroom. So it's something to consider. And obviously, if you don't need it, you don't buy it, you've saved. Uh, another area in the bathroom to save is charming decor bathroom can feel kind of utilitarian sometimes. So we like to suggest that you add something that gives it some personality, something that's going to make it feel more like a room you want to spend some time in, particularly if it's your primary bathroom. So maybe you want to add some charming decor. This could be something simple like a garden stool. This could be a little chair. It's a great place for one of Anita's little French chairs if you've got the room for it, or a little table. Maybe you even want to add in a little lamp, something like that, or a silver tray you find at a consignment store. Adding those little bits of charm and interest and personality to your bathroom goes a long way to making it beautiful. But those are areas that you don't have to put a lot of money into. So what are we defining today? Well, we were just in the bathroom and we're actually defining commode. Oh, what a nice segue. Well, but it's not what you're thinking, kind of. Uh, I'm not really talking about the thing that belongs in the bathroom. I am talking about the elaborately decorated 18th century French chest of drawers or low cabinet. (laughs) That is called a commode, but it does mean both. It does also mean a toilet. So what happened? This is called a semantic drift. It's a gradual change in the meaning of a word as it was used over time. So in the early 18th century France, the word commode meant a chest of drawers or a cabinet for storing personal items. So it comes from the French word for convenient or suitable. So it is this low cabinet or chest of drawers with elaborate decoration, usually with a cabriole legs or short feet. And the earlier ones had a bomb or convex shape with a flat back that went against the wall. So see, the later the shape went to more of a rectilinear design with straighter legs. And then over time, commode began to mean that cabinet that held a chamber pot. And that gradually revolved over time to refer to a wooden chair-like piece of furniture that held the chamber pot. And in the final stage of the semantic drift, it began to refer to the toilet. And see, I wow. said it, toilet. I can say the word. So you there you go. You said it a few times. Wow. I know. Yeah. I'm growing. I'm growing. Bold. And yeah, you're really out there with the toilet. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> That's really interesting. Well, yeah, it is. And I've always wondered why they have the same name anyway. So I did a little research and I, it, was, it, was, it was very interesting. Yeah, so if you went into an antique store and you asked to see if they had any commodes and they took you to the restroom, (laughs) 
or they showed you a lovely piece of French furniture, both would be right. That's so funny. Exactly. So what is is your crush? Oh, my crush is kind of a throwback to one of your crushes that uh, if people enjoy it, they could check out this podcast that gives you a tutorial on it. Remember, quite some time ago, you talked about the Merlin app, which is the oh, yes. third app by, yeah, the Cornell uh, Ornithology Department. It's a great app. It's so fun. I have a lot of birds in my backyard. I have hummingbird feeders and bird feeders and whatnot. And we have these crazy parrots that live in the area. So I have really enjoyed it. So if you haven't tried the Merlin app, it, I, it's completely free from what I can tell. They might have some things that you can buy in there. But to get all of the information about the birds, it's completely free. And it's super fun. And it seems to be pretty spot on with actually identifying the birds. I was looking to get some information about best ways to use it and the way to get the most information out of it. And I stumbled upon a podcast. They interview this gentleman and he talks all about the different ways that you can use the app. So we will link that in the show notes. I love the Merlin app. It's so wonderful when you hear a bird and you're wondering, what is that? You record it and then the app tells you what kind of a bird it is. I, I think it's just so incredible. To have that yeah, kind of technology it, just in your phone. Yes, yes. And then you can even go further after you identify it. You can tap through. You can learn about where that bird would normally be. So if it's rare that it's in your area and you can learn what it likes to eat. So I've actually tweaked what I put in my feeder based on the birds that are normally in my backyard. I did notice that they took a lot of the seeds and kind of chucked some of them on the ground and then I ate okay. some of them. So now we know what they really like. And so then I can start filling that, uh, filling the feeders up with that. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, fun. So what's your crush? My crush is a cashmere and wool pill remover because I have this wonderful sweater I got in the fall. I've worn it almost every day, every cold day since I've worn it. And I looked down recently and it was covered with pills. I mean, it looked like it was 10 years old and I had just worn it for a few months. So I went on Amazon and found it. I had a pill remover a long time ago that looked more like an electric razor and it could be a little damaging to your garment. I didn't want another one of those. This is actually more like a wooden comb and you stretch your garment out, kind of taunt on the table or countertop and then pull this comb through there. And it kind of cuts off the the pills. And it's actually very satisfying kind of doing that. You know, it's kind of like me and ironing. I love, I know you don't like to iron, but I love seeing something transformed that's all wrinkly. Then it's... Yeah, it's me and weeding. Oh, it's you and weeding. Okay. Oh, I hate weeding. Okay. <laughs> I can't stand that. But anyway, this is very, it's very, uh, you know, gratifying. You you run it over your sweater and then the, the pills are gone, but there's this big pile of pills on your countertop. So it's kind of fun to use it. That's great. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. It was so much fun. Definitely remember to head back and listen to 618 along with this episode. Remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult. We can't wait to talk to you.